Proverbs is unique in the canon of Scripture, a compilation of short, pithy sayings which put in easily understood and easily memorized form the wisdom to live a godly life. This book is neither theoretical nor theological, but intensely practical. The majority of it was quoted from or compiled by Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. 1 Kings 4.32 tells us that he spoke 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. Only about 800 of them appear in this book. Solomon was wise because he asked wisdom from God. Realizing his inability to lead Israel, he asked God for an understanding heart. God gave him wisdom liberally, just as he's promised to do with us in James chapter 1, verse 5. God also gave him riches, which the Lord has given to us spiritually, according to Ephesians 1, 3, and honor, which will be ours at the Lord's appearing, as stated in 1 Peter 1, 7. Unable to handle the riches and fame, he sought out many inventions. He tells us in Ecclesiastes that, having sought satisfaction everywhere under the sun, he found it all empty and frustrating. The end of man, he concluded, is to keep the commandments of the Lord. All man does will ultimately be rightly assessed by God the judge. Solomon tells us at the beginning of this book of Proverbs that the source of wisdom is God. To know God is the foundation of knowledge and wisdom. Solomon also tells us the way to get wisdom is to search for it as hidden treasure. Wisdom is worth having over anything else, he says. This wisdom could be defined as the ability to act properly in real life situations. This is one of the few commodities that can be passed along from one generation to another. So the son is to listen to the parents when they pass on the wisdom of their life experience. The book covers the whole range of life situations. In the first nine chapters, Solomon is addressing his son. He begins by telling him that accepting instruction is an evidence of being wise. This should encourage us when we're rebuked. Solomon then speaks specifically, first about the influence of the friends we choose, and then many situations that we face in life. He touches on sexual purity, financial integrity, kindness to neighbors, and proper work ethic. From chapters 10 to 24, there seems to be a minimal amount of connection. Proverbs are sentence sermons, like a bird with two wings having two comparable or contrasting thoughts. Notice the two basic kinds of statements. One is called antithetic parallelism, where a pair of opposite principles are contrasted. An example is found in chapter 10, verse 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. The other type is called synonymous parallelism, where identical or similar principles are paired. One of the most famous proverbs of this type is in chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 25 to 29 give a collection of proverbs attributed to Solomon, but collected by the men of King Hezekiah and added to the book at a later date. Chapters 30 and 31 are the words of Agur and King Lemuel respectively. They are unidentified outside of these two passages of scripture. King Lemuel gives a wonderful description of a wise woman, which has been the subject of many a sermon on the virtues of womanhood. The diversity of subjects in this book match the diversity of needs we face. Wisdom is not just in reading this book, but by doing it. And that's our scripture snapshot of the Proverbs.